May. May coincides with step five. Confession, if you will. Representing integrity after having the courage to face the truth about ourselves in order to move past our negatives and change for the better. Forward progress for what we thought was a no-win proposition. Hopefully, after doing this work, we are feeling a part of society today, no longer feeling separate from. We're going to start with the serenity prayer, and then we'll go into the daily reflections. If you or someone you know are questioning yourselves about whether or not you're an alcoholic or whether they are an alcoholic or drug addict, reach out. We can help you. You don't have to do it alone. God. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Grant me patience with the struggles that take time, and appreciation for all that I have, tolerance of those with different struggles, and the strength to get up and try again, one day at a time. A resting place. May 8th. All of Alcoholics Anonymous's 12 steps ask us to go contrary to our natural desires. They all deflate our egos. When it comes to ego deflation, few steps are harder to take than five. But scarcely any step is more necessary to long-term sobriety and peace of mind than this one. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 55. After writing down my character defects, I was unwilling to talk about them and decided it was time to stop carrying this burden alone. I needed to confess those defects to someone else. I had read, and been told, I could not stay sober unless I did. Step 5 provided me with a feeling of belonging, with humility and serenity, when I practiced it in my daily living. It was important to admit my defects of character in the order presented in Step 5, to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. Admitting to God first paved the way for admission to myself and to another person. As the taking of the step is described, a feeling of being at one with God and my fellow man brought me to a resting place where I could prepare myself for the remaining steps towards a full and meaningful sobriety. The journey in sobriety is not an easy one, especially when one has to face their own flaws and shortcomings. The first five principles of Alcoholics Anonymous, honesty, hope, faith, courage, and integrity, set the foundation for recovery. These principles guide us towards a life free from addiction by encouraging us to look within ourselves and acknowledging our shortcomings. It is the fifth step that often proves to be the most challenging, the act of admitting to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. This step is difficult because it requires us to face our deepest fears and vulnerabilities. We have to confront the things that we are most ashamed of, the things that we have been hiding from ourselves and others. It requires us to be completely honest with ourselves and to share that honesty with another person. This can be a daunting task, especially for those who have been carrying the burden of addiction for years. The act of admitting our wrongs to another person requires us to let go of our ego. It forces us to face the fact that we are not perfect and that we have made mistakes. We must be vulnerable, and vulnerability is not something that comes easy to most of us. The ego is a powerful force, and it's often the thing that prevents us from admitting our wrongs. We want to protect ourselves, to maintain our image of perfection, and to avoid being judged by others. This step requires us to do the opposite, to acknowledge our imperfections and to allow ourselves to be judged by another person. It is important to note that admitting our wrongs to God is not simply a matter of saying a prayer and asking for forgiveness. It is about acknowledging our wrongs to a higher power and seeking guidance and strength to overcome them. It is about recognizing that we cannot do this alone and that we will need the support of a power greater than ourselves. After admitting our wrongs to God, we then admit it to ourselves. This requires us to be brutally honest and to acknowledge the extent of our addiction and the harm it has caused. We must confront the lies we have been telling ourselves and the rationalizations we have been using to justify our behavior. It is a painful process, but it is necessary for true healing to occur. Finally, we must admit our wrongs to that other human being. It can be a sponsor, a therapist, or a trusted friend. 
It is important to choose someone who will listen without judgment and who will provide us with support and guidance. Admitting our wrongs to another person allows us to share our burden and to receive feedback and insight from someone who has walked a similar path. They have found the solution. When we work step five in our daily lives, we begin to experience a sense of belonging, humility, and serenity. We don't feel the need to hide our flaws and weaknesses from others. We become more accepting of ourselves and others. We realize that we are all imperfect beings and that it is our imperfections that make us human. We let go of our ego and embrace our vulnerability. Step five is a critical step in the recovery process, and it is essential for long-term sobriety and peace of mind. We take the brave and courageous step toward healing and transformation. We free ourselves from the burden of addiction and open ourselves to a life of possibility and joy. It's not an easy step, but it is one that we must take if we are to find true happiness and fulfillment. A resting place. May 8th. All of Alcoholics Anonymous's 12 steps ask us to go contrary to our natural desires. They all deflate our egos. When it comes to ego deflation, few steps are harder to take than five. But scarcely any step is more necessary to long-term sobriety and peace of mind than this one. 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 55. After writing down my character defects, I was unwilling to talk about them and decided it was time to stop carrying this burden alone. I needed to confess those defects to someone else. I had read and been told I could not stay sober unless I did. Step 5 provided me with a feeling of belonging, with humility and serenity when I practiced it in my daily living. It was important to admit my defects of character in the order presented in Step 5, to God, to ourselves, and to another human being. Admitting to God first paved the way for admission to myself and to another person. As the taking of the step is described, a feeling of being at one with God and my fellow man brought me to a resting place where I could prepare myself for the remaining steps towards a full and meaningful sobriety. Please subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.